I'm Eric Grenier of theRit.ca, and this is my brief history of elections in Ontario. Let's get to it. Let's start with 1867, Ontario's first election, and our first premier was John Sandfield Macdonald. No, not John A. Macdonald. Don't get them mixed up. In 1871, though, his Conservative Party was defeated by the Liberals under Edward Blake. Blake was one of Canada's whiniest politicians, and after a little while, he decided he didn't like that very much, and he wanted to go on to federal politics. That was good for the Liberals, because his replacement was Oliver Mowat. Now, Mowat became Premier in 1872, and he stayed there for 24 years. He led the Liberals in election wins really throughout the 1880s and into the 1890s, always being able to defeat the Conservatives. He was often fighting with John A. Macdonald for provincial rights for Ontario, and was able to serve longer than any other Premier in Ontario's history. In fact, he was there for 10 years longer than the next longest Premier. So Oliver Mowat really set his stamp on the Ontario Liberals and the province in the 19th century. Now, after winning in 1875, 1879, 1883, 1886, 1890, and 1894, Oliver Mowat decided, you know, that was probably enough, and so he went to go join Wilfrid Laurier's federal government in 1896. His replacement was Arthur Hardy, who did win re-election for the Liberals in 1898, and when he resigned just a year later, his health wasn't great, he was replaced by George William Ross, who did manage to lead the Liberals to one last victory in 1902, but it was a very narrow win over the Conservatives now under James Whitney. Then in 1905, there was a huge swing towards the Conservatives. More than 20 seats went between the two parties, and James Whitney was able to form government, the first Conservative government in Ontario in over three decades. Now, Whitney's time in office did have some lasting impacts on Ontario. He was the one who created Ontario Hydro, for example. He also brought in Regulation 17, which limited French language education in the province and became something of a touchstone that set the Conservatives apart from Franco-Ontarians and made it very hard for them to have support among that community for a long time. Nevertheless, Whitney was very successful at winning elections for the Conservatives. At this time, he won in 1908, he won again in 1911, and then in 1914, but he died three months later and that was the end of James Whitney. Now Whitney was replaced by William Howard Hurst, who brought in Prohibition during the First World War. But things didn't go very well for the Conservatives shortly after that. By the end of the war, the party was unpopular. It was a new party that had formed. This was called the United Farmers of Ontario. This was part of a movement throughout Canada just after the First World War, where these agrarian parties, parties that were trying to represent farmer interests and not the interest of the old Liberal and Conservative parties, were starting to rise up. And in 1919, the United Farmers, the UFO, was able to win that election, form a minority government, and then a coalition with the Labour Party, which actually won some seats as well, and ended the conservative-liberal exchange of power in Ontario that had been in there since the beginning of Confederation. The United Farmers didn't actually have a leader in 1919. They had to go to someone, Ernest Drury, who became the premier, the first United Farmers premier of Ontario, and he would turn out to be, of course, the only one. Now, the United Farmers were a little bit of an odd party. They didn't really feel it was that appropriate to form government. A lot of their members felt that they should only be there to represent farmers' interests. Ernest Drury didn't agree with that. He wanted to expand support for the United Farmers into the cities to get workers on board, but those tensions within the party led to its downfall, and in 1923, Howard Ferguson and the Conservatives won a big majority government. They gained more than 50 seats, and the Conservatives were back in power. Now, Howard Ferguson was a bit more of a partisan street fighter. He was a clever politician, and in 1926, he recognized that alcohol could be a winning issue for him. Prohibition had been placed in Ontario, and it wasn't all that popular in a lot of places in the province. So he suggested that rather having it be something that was illegal, that was smuggled, bootlegged, why not bring alcohol sales under government control? The population liked that. He won the 1926 election, and as a result, Ontario has now the LCBO. Ferguson would win one more election for the Conservatives in 1929, and then in 1930 he took a job as the UK High Commissioner in London. Not a bad gig. He was replaced by George Henry. Henry had the bad luck of being a government leader during the Great Depression. This was a very hard time for governments throughout the country. They were being defeated in election after election, and Henry was no different. In 1934, Mitchell Hepburn and the Liberals defeated him, and the Liberals came to power. Hepburn is a pretty interesting figure. He was really a populist, he was a very charismatic speaker, and he was also a little bit of a partier. And he brought the Liberals to power, gave them a much different kind of style than what Ontario had seen in the past, and he was able to get the Liberal Party re-elected in 1937 and set himself up for what would turn out to be a pretty big showdown with Mackenzie King and the federal Liberals once the Second World War broke out. Now Hepburn and Mackenzie King didn't really get along. 
Hepburn felt kind of shunned by King. King felt a little bit threatened by Hepburn that maybe he could become the new federal liberal leader. And by the time of the Second World War, Hepburn decided that he was going to come out against Mackenzie King's leadership of the country, criticizing the approach that Canada was taking at the beginning of the Second World War. He actually had support from the opposition leader, George Drew, something that Mackenzie King did not like very much. So when Hepburn challenged King over his handling of the war, King decided to meet that challenge with an election, a federal election, which the King Liberals won in a pretty big fashion. Hepburn was able to continue running the province for a few more years, but the tensions between the federal Liberals and the Ontario Liberals became too much, and in 1942, he resigned as leader, and the next year, in 1943, the Liberals were defeated by the Conservatives, now called the Progressive Conservatives, under George Drew. So in 1943, the Liberal vote collapses, and it's actually the CCF, the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation under Ted Jolliffe, that forms the official opposition. They're actually only four seats short of forming a government, which would have been, at that time, the first CCF government in the country. Instead, it was Drew who won a minority government and started what would be more than four decades of PC rule in Ontario. After two years of minority government, George Drew defeated the CCF in the 1945 election. The CCF vote actually collapsed as the Liberals, now again under Mitchell Hepburn, returned to official opposition status. But in 1948, there was another election. George Drew won it again, but he lost his own seat. Rather than try to get a seat in a by-election, he decided that he was done with provincial politics and he would go try to win the leadership of the federal Progressive Conservative Party, which he did. His replacement was Leslie Frost. Now, in 1951, Leslie Frost wanted his own mandate. He sent the province to the polls and won big, 79 of 90 seats. The Leslie Frost years included a lot of changes in Ontario. Healthcare, highways, investments in education. The PCs under Frost and subsequent leaders really ran more to the center. They were a big tent party bringing together voters throughout Ontario and it's one of the reasons why they were called the big blue machine. They were just able to win election after election. Frost won in 1951 and he won two more elections after that. Frost resigned in 1961 and his replacement was John Robarts. Robarts was able to win two more elections in 1963 and 1967 and then he resigned in 1971. Now, the 1970s were very competitive in Ontario politics. The PCs under Bill Davis were able to win all the elections that took place between 1971 and 1985, but you saw that the New Democrats and the Liberals were very competitive and vying for the official opposition status. Stephen Lewis and the New Democrats formed the official opposition in 1975 when the PCs were reduced to a minority government, and in 1977, it was another minority government led by Bill Davis and the PCs, though that one lasted until 1981. In 1981, the PCs were able to get their majority again and that meant that Bill Davis could resign once 1985 came around. Now, 1985 was a big year in Ontario politics. Frank Miller replaced Bill Davis and became the PC leader. He was really pushing the Conservatives into a more right-wing approach. And what happened in the 1985 election is that the PCs won 52 seats, but the Liberals won 48, and the New Democrats won 25. Frank Miller's PCs had only a couple more seats than the Liberals, and they lost a confidence vote and the Liberals under David Peterson and the New Democrats under Bob Ray decided to get together, form an agreement, not a coalition, but an agreement that put David Peterson's Liberals in power. They were able to govern the province for another two years when in 1987, David Peterson led the Liberals to a huge majority victory, giving them what could be, and what they would have thought was, a long time in office. That was the plan. The polls were looking really good for David Peterson in 1990, so he decided to call an early election. He didn't need to go to the polls that early, and that opportunism might have hurt him quite a bit. What happened was that the Liberals started that campaign with the lead in the polls, but by the end of it, Bob Ray and the New Democrats were in front. And, in 1990, they won the first and only NDP government. Now, Bob Ray's time in office was a little tumultuous. The economy wasn't doing very well. And by 1995, the New Democrats were extremely unpopular. And they were defeated in the 1995 election by Mike Harris and the Progressive Conservatives. They had been in third place in the previous two elections, but in 1995, Harris brought forward his common sense revolution, and people seemed to like it, and put the PCs back in office. The NDP really collapsed and fell back into third place. Now, Mike Harris was re-elected in 1999, and we saw the same kind of thing happen with the New Democrats continuing to lose seats and falling out of contention with the other two parties. The party that did gain seats was Dalton McGuinty's Liberals. 
Now, after 1999, the McGinty Liberals kept rising in the polls, and by 2002, the PCs were in a lot of trouble. Mike Harris decided to resign, and his replacement was Ernie Eves. It didn't really help the PCs in the polls very much, though, and in the 2003 election, Dalton McGinty and the Liberals won a big majority government. They were able to stay in power for quite a while. 2007, the McGinty Liberals were again able to be re-elected, defeating the Progressive Conservatives now under John Tory, and in 2011, they were re-elected, though with a minority government. Tim Hudak and the PCs and Andrew Horvath and the New Democrats were able to make gains at the expense of the Liberals, and after a few years, McGinty became one of, really, the country's least popular premiers. He resigned. His replacement was Kathleen Wynne, who became the first openly gay premier, and she was able to lead the Liberals to a majority win in 2014, defeating Tim Hudak's PCs and, again, Andrew Horvath's New Democrats. Now, after 15 years of liberal rule in 2018, the desire for change was pretty high, and Kathleen Wynne's Liberals were in trouble heading into that campaign. The PCs seemed to be maybe in their own trouble because Patrick Brown had to resign due to scandal in early 2018, just months before the election. And his replacement was Doug Ford, the brother of the former mayor of Toronto, Rob Ford. Nevertheless, the PCs were able to win the election in 2018. The Liberals fell to third place, and it was the New Democrats under Andrew Horvath who returned to official opposition status. And that's it. You're up to date on the history of elections in Ontario. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will like it and subscribe to this YouTube channel. For the writ.ca, I'm Eric Grenier. Thanks for watching.